Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect and After Effects Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the Color Correction folder. Now this folder is pretty large, there's some effects that are redundant and some of them that are pretty specific in here. So I'm going to be going over the major effects and key points for the most part. Now, one thing I have open is the Lumetri Scopes. If you ever go to Window, you can always open your scopes, and this is just another visual way for us to see what's going on in the footage. Here I just have the histograms open, but you can also open all different kinds of scopes for you to see information about the color and whatnot. But this will help you visualize what's going on in some of these effects. Now the first three effects are pretty simple. We have auto color, auto contrast, and auto levels. If I actually can just drag all those on the clip at once. That's a, a quick tip also as well. You can drag multiple clips by holding shift and drag multiple effects onto a clip. And remember the effects control panel, they're organized in order, they are applied in order that they're organized. So auto contrast, auto color, and auto levels just tries to fix the contrast, color, and levels. In this case, it's not really doing much of a difference because the clip was already shot in good contrast from the camera. There's good lighting, crisp colors. But you can see it tries to adjust contrast. It's not always perfect, and you always have the option of going in and adjusting the contrast to your taste. Also, remember, whenever we're talking about color correction, your monitor's brightness and display, make sure you're not getting fooled by your monitor. That's another reason scopes can help. But moving along, we have black and white next. This is just a simple black and white effect, but it also comes with the option to adjust individual color channels strength of brightness. So for example, in this clip with this red little fruit coming off the tree, we can increase just the reds of this color channel. And you can see we can make those brighter or darker. So if you wanted a specific black and white look or a specific contrast in your black and white, because sometimes colors don't really translate in black and white, you can do it that way. Next up, we have brightness contrast. Again, another way for you to manually adjust contrast or brightness if you wanted a little bit darker or brighter of a look. And remember, we're not always going to be working on video clips. You could also add brightness and contrast onto generated effects and the different animations, presets like the clouds and fog. Next up, we have broadcast colors. This one's a little bit more technical. It just tries to limit certain colors to broadcast signal specifications. So if you're not going to be broadcasting your footage on certain signals, then you don't have to worry about this one too much. But if you are, maybe look more into that. Next up, we have CC Color Neutralizer. This will allow us to try to neutralize or get rid of certain colors from the shadows, midtones, or highlights of a clip. Now, it's meant to kind of be a functional, like, fixing effect to fix certain issues, not really like a creative effect. Let's say we felt like the shadows were too blue for some reason and they weren't accurate. We could always try to take that blue out of the shadows. So however you wanted to do that. In this case, you know, there isn't really much imbalance of colors. But you could see when I take the blue out of the shadows, they try to become a little bit more green if that's, if, if that's what I felt was a more accurate or better look that I was going for. If I felt like there was too much pink in the highlights, I could try to take out the pink in the highlights. And you see it's almost starting to act like we're color grading, but we're not necessarily. Next up, we have color offset. This just allows us to adjust the red, green, or blue color phases. So you could see in the histogram what's going on. Only the red color channel is getting offset as I rotate it, thus changing the amount of reds and the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can use it maybe in a creative way or in a way to try to fix certain color imbalances. Like let's say on this clip, there was, I felt like the blue wasn't really accurate. I could try to bring it back a little bit. And in this case, it kind of does help out. You can see it kind of brings things back together. Next up, we have CC kernel. This is like the convolution kernel that you might be familiar with from Premiere Pro and other programs. It basically tries to create a mathematical function based on a matrix. So you have row or line one and input one, two, and three. 
and then line two, one, two, and three, line three, one, two, and three. And so it can get a little bit complicated, but by inputting specific numbers into each box of this matrix, they all kind of multiply or mathematically combine to allow you to create things like brightening or sharpening effects in custom ways. So it can be a little bit hard to figure out what inputs are gonna do what. You can look up different preset inputs for different things, but most of the time, if you wanna just brighten something, you can do that in other ways. And if you wanna sharpen, you can do that in other ways. Next up, we have CC Toner. This allows us to create kind of a monochromed image, but you can also change to just a duotone instead of a tritone or even a pentone, so five different colors at once. And you can create your own little tints and monochromatic toned things. You can even blend them back in with the original if you just wanted to tint a little bit. Next up, we have change color, which allows us to change something about a certain color. So if we wanted to change, let's say the red of this image, the red colors in this image, and remember you can always use your ink dropper, it'll allow us to change the hue, lightness, or saturation of those colors. So if I change the hue, you'll see we can change to like a green berry, but it has this weird sharpness because not the entire circle is pure red. This is where the tolerance comes in handy. If you increase the tolerance, it is more lenient on what it considers red or things closer to this color range will get affected. And so in this way, you can get a little bit better of a selection and you can in adjust the hue, lightness, or even the saturation of certain colors. So the next one, change to color, is also very similar, but it might be a little bit different, more intuitive way to do things. You can select from one color, so from red, and I can change it to another color. So let's choose blue. So now we changed everything red from to blue in this, and it's not necessarily based on the color channel, it's based on the color specifically. And again, you can adjust the tolerance so that it picks up on hues around the other hue. So you could see if I click view correction mat, everything white is what it's picking up on and changing and the black stuff is the parts of the mask that are not getting changed. Next up we have channel mixer. This allows us to influence the red, green, and blue color amounts in each of the red, green, and blue channels. So it's kind of like a non-visual way of adjusting the colors in each of the color channels to get any sort of tint you want. Let's say you wanted to add more of a green tint, you can do that, but it can also be a little bit more functional. If you feel like there's too much red in the shadows or highlights, you can pull red in or out of certain places. So that can go either way, but there's other ways to do stuff like that as well. Next up, you have color balance, similar to the last one, but this one separates into shadows, midtones, and highlights, and lets us adjust the red, green, blue of each of those separate sections. So if I wanted the shadows to be a lot more red, I can boost that up. But if I wanted a lot more green in the highlights, I can boost that up. Next up, we have color balance HLS, which stands for hue, lightness, and saturation, which are the three parameters that we can adjust in this effect. So hue, we get this nice little color wheel where we can do every degree of the hue wheel changing things around. You can even make animations by keyframing the rotations. You can also adjust the lightness up or down and the saturation stronger or more desaturated. Next up you have color link. This allows you to pick the colors from another layer. So in this case, let's say the same layer that we're working on. So you can pick the average color, the median, the brightest, the darkest, so there's some different functional ways or uses for this that you can blend in with your original image. So you can put this on a blending mode of like screen, for example, and it will always have the average color of the clip blended in. If you're blending two different clips together or you need a background layer of a certain color. So different ways that you could possibly use that. Along those same lines, we have color stabilizer next up, which takes the point of one point of the frame. So you can see this point right here. And it tries to use that, whatever colors on that point to balance out either the brightness or levels or curves of the image. So if you had some sort of weird flicker going on and you didn't want that to be happening, 
or maybe you wanted to create a weird flicker. You could use one point in the image, so let's change it to this point. And it'll try to always stabilize the color based on what it, where you had that point. Next up, we have the colorama effect. This one you're gonna have to drop down some folders to see what's going on. And it's kind of like the gradient map tool in Photoshop. It allows you to map out the different colors of your image to your own set colors. So by default, it's this rainbow here, but you can choose all these different preset defaults. Not only do they have the presets, but you can also individually create whatever color points and presets that you want and create your own. And you can also choose how that color cycle wraps around your image with some of these other settings. So you can use this to color. You can even blend it back in with your original layer if you wanted to just do like some subtle color tinting or something like that. And remember, always keep in mind that you can, you can be doing this on text, gradient or shapes and things that aren't necessarily video clips as well. Next up, we have curves. You might be familiar with this from most many editing programs. So this just represents the shadows and the highlights and the midpoints and you can adjust those to be darker or brighter. So a quick use of curves, if you wanted to darken up the dark parts and brighten up the bright parts, it can be one way to add a bit of contrast to your image. Or if you wanted to lift up the black point, you can add a more matte finish on the shadows so it's not as pure black and changes to like a more soft washed out look. Curves are infinitely useful in creative color effects or functionally fixing things. And you can adjust not only the red, green, blue, but just the red color channel itself or the blue color channel itself. So like I was saying earlier, it's kind of like a few of these other effects, but I personally prefer to do things in this visual way rather than with all the numbers and sliders. So if you're gonna know one effect that'll help you in so many different programs, definitely get familiar with curves. I have full separate tutorials on curves if you want more. Next up we have equalize. This tries to equalize out the brightness of the pixels within the image. So you can see it kind of redistributes everything and tries to get a uniform equalized brightness. Another way to adjust the brightness is with the exposure effect. So you can make the exposure higher or lower and the offset and gamma can squeeze out the black points and, or the white points as well. Gamma, pedestal, and gain is just another way to adjust the channel curves, kind of adjust the black points, the red, green, or blue points, which we've seen many different ways to do stuff like this so far. Hue saturation is similar to the HLS effect that we saw earlier, but you have a little bit different flexibility and interface here. Not only can you adjust the entire color wheel, you can also just adjust one section, so just the reds. If you wanted, you can see just changing the reds there or just desaturating only one part or brightening and contrast, so it's another useful, flexible tool. And along with that, we also have leave color, so this will allow us to desaturate everything but one color. So in this case, red, we can increase the tolerance a bit and decolor everything else to our liking. So in this case, we can have just one pop of color happening. Next up, we have levels. So a manual way to adjust the levels this time rather than auto. And you can see it, has, it also has a histogram, which is what we have open, kind of flipped over on the side here. So if you squeeze in your levels, it'll kind of create more contrast. If you just take the black point and lift it up, it'll wash out the black point and you can see all that happening on our represented Lumetri histogram here. So it's kind of nice to be able to do it with sliders. You have the shadow, midpoint, and highlight slider. And you can also adjust the levels of individual color channels. You have levels individual controls, which is just another way, but in this case it lets you individually adjust the red, green, and blue. And then a big one in one is the entire Lumetri color effect. Gives you the whole Lumetri color panel. So basic color correction from contrast, exposure, shadows, highlights to creative stuff like applying a LUT. This is, kind of the, this is where you can apply a LUT and After Effects. With these looks, you can load your own. 
and also being able to adjust the shadows or highlight tints. So ton of stuff you can do here. I have a full separate tutorial just on Lumetri color correcting and grading. If you want to check it out, it's in Premiere Pro, but same UI, same tools. And even within this, you have curves once again, color wheels, vignette is an interesting one. You can add a vignette around the corners, making it a little bit of a dark shadows around there. Next up, we have photo filter. This just adds like a little tint or a filter onto the effect as if you had put a photo filter on the camera. So you have warming filters, you have cooling filters, you have you know underwater, yellow, blue, different color filters, or you can also just choose your own color. So custom, and you can pick whatever color filter you want. And you also have the option to preserve luminosity or not, which kind of will fill in the highlights or not. Next up, we have PS Arbitrary Map. So this allows us to shift the phase of everything. If I do it and you watch the histogram, you'll kind of see what's going on visually. I can change. It basically just rotates the entire histogram map. So the shadows become the highlights. The hues become opposite of each other. Next up, we have Selective Color. So let's just say I wanted to adjust the reds of the image, which it's set to right now. I can change the CMYK values, so cyan, magenta, yellow. So in this way, just allowing us to selectively adjust just one color channel or one at a time. Next up, we have shadow highlight. By default, this will automatically try to balance the amount of shadow and highlight levels, but you can also turn off the default and try to fix it or balance and adjust things yourself. This can help sometimes if, let's say, you're working with the overblown highlights or two dark shadows. You can try to bring up the shadows or bring down the highlights a bit to get more detail in them. So this this is also available in the Lumetri color panel. So different places to do this. Next up we have tint. This again is kind of like the tritone or toner effect. However, in this case it's just black and white. So just two colors. This is similar to gradient map in Photoshop as well. So here's a black and white tint, but I can do anything. I can do a red and white tint. I can do a red and green tint. It's a really cool, fun effect. There's lots of different ways you could use and combine this. And you can also adjust the strength. So just tinting a little bit or tinting a lot. You can swap easily. So tint is a cool one. And then along with that as well, you have tritone. Again, similar to the toner effect. This might have been in there from older versions. And some of them are in newer versions. but. This just allows you to adjust the highlights, midtones, and shadows, and the blend amount. So by default, we have this kind of sepia toned effect, um, but you can pick whatever colors you want just for monochromatic looks. Next up, we have vibrance. This just allows us to increase either the saturation or the vibrance amounts of the image. Again, which you can find these under the Lumetri color as well, I believe, but if you want to do it individually, you can do that. And lastly, we have video limiter which is a little bit more of a technical one. It clips the levels of certain colors in your image based on certain technical standards. But that covers most of the main points of what's available in the color correction panel. Hopefully you get a good idea of all the different tools and what they're trying to adjust. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. In the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at a very fun folder, which is the distort video effects folder and all the different effects in there. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.